29th of April, 2022. I was sitting with one of my colleagues, Joanna, up here on in the last row. This doesn't work now. <laughs> Over there. And listening to, we were listening to the presentation by Gunnar von Hein uh, about how Nobel Prize uh, Committee work and the history behind the Nobel Prizes. We sat there. I was listening to all these presentations, uh, all that presentation, and I, for a second, my mind drifted off, and I thought, how. Honor, what, a, what an honor it would be to stand there and share your work. Standing in this hall, I was, after one second, I felt like, what? I'm a teacher. I cannot present here. I didn't know that the teachers stand here and present their work. Uh, today, 11 months after the, that exact 29th of April, I'm standing here and presenting my work. You can understand how honored I feel standing here. Someone rightly said, dreams do come true. So please dream on. I feel very honored to be, uh, to be given this prize. And I, words do not <laughs> come. Uh, well, here, uh, in this picture, it's my uh, colleague. We are actually uh, both work together very well, and we share so many ideas together. Uh, that's for the best of our students. I have been working for the last 20 years, and that's why I call myself Accelerating Science for 20 uh, for 20 years. This is my picture standing in CERN, if you have been there. this uh, uh, I was there once for two weeks, a uh, professional development course during, uh, during um, July, when all my friends were, all my colleagues were uh, loading up for next year. I was enjoying in, uh, uh, getting some knowledge for my students. I also, the same year, I also went to ESA, I do all these things just to get more motiva uh, motivation for my students, more inspiration for my students, so that I myself can feel how it feels, and so that I can tell my students how, uh, what is out there for them. I don't know why this is not working. Yeah, so so when I come back from these kind of uh, uh, professional development courses, I I teach my students. I tell them about all everything that is out there, and they should be thinking about it. So one recently, one of my students wrote to me, "Hi Preeti, I was a student at your mentor class in Rodaberry Schoola. I wanted to reach out and thank you for always empowering women to engage in STEM-related topics." As it inspired my science-dominated subject choice, choices in IB program, graduation 2022. And for my bachelor's degree, one thing I will always take with me for, uh, from your teaching was the attitude to push myself, take, take risks, and flip the gender roles of sciences, because it is truly is for everyone. I, feel, I felt very honored, and I also felt like very full of energy. That's something that I did. One of my students who feels that way, that after studying, uh, after my lessons, I'm sorry today, I'm a little. <laughs> so my, um, to, um, my presentation today is about interdisciplinary approaches to teaching and learning sciences. How I integrate different subjects. When I was a student teacher, I was shown this picture. Now I was psychology major, so I knew what this uh, this uh, picture tells. But what? Uh, but that time I had already had a teacher's hat on my head. So I just saw one thing: teacher's role down there, teacher's role as a facilitator. That is the thing that I took from my education when I was uh, studying in India as a teacher. This. I, whenever I plan my lesson, this is always at the back of my head. 
But my teaching philosophy is based on Bloom's taxonomy, which goes from, uh, which goes from lower order thinking skills to higher order th thinking skills, where I first I focus on what they remember or just the basics of the subject, and then I keep on building up their knowledge through understanding, applying analysis, evalu evaluation, and, uh, and creating something. So my goal always for any topic I do is to that my students should create something. They should not be uh, should not only be consumers, they should be creators as well. So every topic that I teach, they should create something be, uh, learning from uh, the topic. Every year in the beginning of the school year, I just my, I give one paper to my students and I ask them to write science in the middle of the paper. And then I ask them, what do you remember from the last year? Whatever you, have, uh, you remember, what you learned in science. They need, they make, they write the words that they remember and then they compare it with their classmates. They talk and then they come up, yeah, I also remember this, I, I forgot to write. So from there I start building up a recall. Do you remember I said in the triangle, remember the bottom part, where, what they remember from the previous, previous one. Sometimes I try some, uh, this strategy, it's called KWL, that is what they know. I, what they want to know and what they want to, uh, what they have learned. I usually give them post-it notes, colorful post-it notes. The moment they get something different than every day, they, uh, from other subjects, they feel excited. Something new is coming. So they already are into the into the lesson. So I ask them to write. Tell, uh, I ask, give them a topic, and then I ask them to write about that topic that we are learning, uh, we are going to learn. They write what they know about it. They, they come on the board, they stick it there. Then I give them another post-it note, then I ask them what they want to write, uh, learn. So they, they write about that topic, what they want to learn. I read the, all these things to, uh, to everyone in the class. They think, yeah, I also had this question, but I didn't write it, or, oh, I also knew it. So they are already learning from each other. Like for example, when the student uh, wrote, I want to know how the magnets feel, magnetic field works and what other objects use magnet. Another student writes, I want to know how we use mag uh, magnets in our everyday life without knowing it. I also want to know how, uh, how it's possible that some magnets attract each other and some uh, repel each other. So th that's how the students actually uh, write. And when I read this, then everyone in the class gets the same question and they also start wondering. So kind of bringing them together at the one place, at one place. After the lesson has been done, like everyone teaches, we have sometimes presentations, sometimes we read, sometimes we have stories. After that, I ask the students to write what did they learn today. After that, they, they, they write and What they started, they started from ri by writing one sentence or two sentences, then coming up to filling up the form at the end of the lesson. So this is how I do the formative assessment of my students, that what they have learned sometimes. Sometimes I start like this. For example, when I teach law of motion, I just start there, I stand there, and I just show them this video. And everyone sees it and feels it and everyone is quiet, what has happened? I ask them, what happened here? People, the students tell different things they know. This, he was driving very fast or they give, they give different ideas. Then I start teaching three laws of motion. Once I have taught them, then I show them this video again. I ask them, tell me which law was being followed in this. Some students say first law, some students say second law, some students say no, not second law, but third law. There is a discussion there. There's an argumentation there. The students discuss, they, they pass on ideas, they, uh, they tell each other. This is where I, sh uh, I check their understanding. 
how they apply their knowledge and also how they analyze the situation. This does not finish here. Once they are done with this, when they have all the knowledge, I give them some scenarios. For example, they got a challenge. Grunalun has been hearing from its customers that their roller coasters are boring. The public is threatening that if the amusement park does not build a new, more exciting roller coaster, they will stop going to the amusement park. You are part of a team of engineers that ha has just been asked to submit a new roller coaster design to the amusement park. Using the concept of forces, motion, and energy, design and build a model of a workable roller coaster that could be built in the Gronalun. Then they start working in the groups. I give them idea, uh, I, I just let them sit and discuss. They research about it and evaluate different ideas. They also do some simulations, try to find out how the simulation will, will work and how they build. After that, they are given some material to build. They come up with ideas and then they build these roller coasters. Their age level, I'm not saying that they are yeah, gymnasium students, but their age level, they do build it and then they test a marble. Uh, another example uh, from cell and its structure in biology, when we, when we start working on cell, you know the biology, the words in biology are not that easy to remember. So I use music, I use different uh, ways to make them remember the words that they are. So one of the way to start with the The nucleus takes over, controlling everything. The party don't stop till the memory box is seen. Inside the vacuole, we can float around for hours. Running around with chloroplasts, loving sun like showers. Cells, cells, they made of organelles. So this kind of a rap, uh, uh, this is a three minutes video, but I just played last 10 seconds of it. So uh, we play this, uh, the, it is repeated again and again, as one of my colleagues was saying, repetition, repetition. So it is repeated, it goes into their head, the words go into their head. Then I ask them to build, to build the different, uh, pick up any of the cells they like and research first and then pick up one of the cells they like and then they have to build a 3D model of a cell. This is the leaf cell they made. This is the egg and the sperm cell. And this is the bacterial cell using all the material that is already there. They are not allowed to buy anything and we, I also ask them whatever we have, we have to recycle, reuse. After that, once they are done, then we, I ask them to make a poster related to the organelles, different organelles, Tell, uh, talking about which organelle is most important. So they make a poster and there is an election about the uh, organelles. They have to choose which organelle is the best organelle in the cell. So they have to make their poster, creating and writing about its features what, what these meant for. And then the students understand, they apply their knowledge, they analyze the situation, and then they, of course, they create the poster. Uh, all the students go around, look at the posters, and then after that, sometimes I ask them to debate, talking about them, uh, their own organelle, or sometimes I just let them vote for those and see why they, are, they have the next one, another very, uh, very funny, I, um, all my students every year like it, uh, a story that I give them about whole living organisms. What are the characteristics of the living organisms? Once I've told them, I give them this story. Marty Martian was sent to Earth by the Martian government to find life. While on Earth, Marty captured a car and brought it back to Mars. He thought he'd found, he found a good example of life on Earth. The Martian government does not believe that the car Marty brought, uh, brought back is alive. Marty must stand trial for failing to perform his Martian duties. At the trial, Marty spoke in his defense. I first saw these, uh, these life forms rolling along roads in great numbers. That is movement. 
They were giving off thick clouds of poisonous waste as they moved, that is respiration. They seemed to exhibit hearing, uh, herding behavior as many of the cars moved in the same direction. They appeared to have a great deal of energy. Some of them moved faster than 60 kilometers per hour. When one of these life forms stopped, when, when one of these life uh, forms, uh, I'm sorry, stop the TV here, <laughs> uh, stopped or slowed down, and the others behind it responded. They, slow, uh, they uh, responded, they slowed down and gave off a reddish light from the back. And sometimes they would make honking noises, that is making sound or s being sensitive. Uh, I observed that they would stop to feed on liquid substance. You work, in, and now then I just, this is a story to build up. Then I asked them, you work independently and first con consider yourself as Marty's defense lawyer uh, and make a good case for the car being alive. Then be the prosecutor and show that the car is a non-living thing. List as many reasons as you can. So they did, they talk about all argumentation for and against it. And at sometimes, again, we have a debate in the classroom and the students actually talk a lot about it. This is where they apply their knowledge, they analyze the situation and they evaluate. In chemistry, uh, once we have an example from the, uh, for group one uh, elements in chemistry, I asked them to write a story. And the story is about a grandma who goes down the, uh, down the market and was sold a saucepan made from potassium. She is going to use it to, to boil some water. By the moment I say to boil some water, everyone says boom. When she gets home, she places the saucepan on the stove, turns on the gas and adds the water. Continue the story. The students write five pages, 10 pages, they use their imagination. They are most excited when they write this story and they are five minutes before the lesson to, tell their, to, uh, to read their stories to their classmates. I, use the I ask them to use the information in here and then uh, write the stories. This is how they evaluate and analyze and create a story. I also use concept cartoons for critical thinking. I give them, de depending on, I just took these pictures just for an example, because I don't have that picture with the stu uh, students. So these are on School Workets website, and I usually take out whatever topic I, I uh, uh, teach. We, we, I give it to the group of students, and then they discuss about, about different uh, perspectives people have on something and there are so many misconceptions there are then they actually uh, solve and come up with the right answer they also use fetch simulations for example this one building the atom and then i ask them to create a model of an atom describe picking up any of them uh, any of the element and then they have to make a model of the atom Again, recycling things at school or at home. Right now, just half an hour back, my class was having a lesson uh, and they were working on Minecraft challenge. Uh, recently, Stockholm Star launched a challenge, Minecraft challenge, uh, about sustainable Stockholm. They have to create, they have to use the uh, global goals and they have to think about two global goals that they can give suggestions to Stockholm uh, Stad's government that they can, we can make Stockholm Stad more, Stockholm City more sustainable. And uh, it's been, for the last two weeks, they have been working on, and many students have actually come up with, um, with many new ideas. And they are working on suggestion of that. I'm very excited students and they now know all 17 goals that we have. Thank you for listening to me.